I'll come a bit closer to the camera and I brought the, hopefully the camera a bit closer to the working area so you can see better what I'm hopefully doing. So we're going to use the hot air gun, we're holding it fairly close, about 25 millimetres away from the paint. We've got our scraper and we should have our gloves on to protect our hands and our mask. And then we're just going to heat that, you can see it bubbling now, and once it starts to bubble it's ready to go. And just push the scraper and paint off with the scraper and just keep that slow momentum. And then we'll be able to keep going. A bit of smoke isn't too much of a problem as long as it doesn't catch fire. Best to do this outdoors. And then just keep pushing, 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 pushing. It's much, much, uh, much, much simpler to, to do a bigger area like like that. But the main thing is to uh, maintain the momentum of the scraper with the hot air gun just running just slightly ahead of it. And once it bubbles, you can just keep gently pushing, 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 pushing. But the main thing is not to uh, set fire to the paint because it'll obviously potentially catch cause a fire, but also it will perhaps burn the wood that you're trying to work on because I want to bring this back to the natural cedar wood that's underneath and so to burn it would be a bit of a disaster. So once we've uh, now taken all that off then we will run over it carefully with the um, belt sander to get rid of this blackness of paint and stain to get back to the original cedar wood. Right, we've now uh, put an 80 grit sanding belt on the belt sander and uh, got my mask on and should really have gloves as well uh, because the dust from some of this old paint could, can cause an allergic reaction and it also can no doubt get into your lungs. So we're going to pass the sander over this um, several times and uh, let the sander do the work, hopefully. That's had about uh, four passes with the belt sander with the 80 grit sanding sheet on it. Uh, it's starting to, you can start to see the cedar wood showing through. It'll need a few more um, goes yet, but the main thing is to let the sander do the work and it'll pull itself on. If you're not used to these, they do take a bit of controlling because when you press the on pitch, you've got to use it. So we go. Just be a bit careful of that and don't get your fingers in any of the uh, moving parts or on the sandpaper thing because especially if you've got no gloves on it will do you some damage. You'll find on the, uh, on the wood there's sometimes you get little dents where the paint will stay but I think I was saying earlier on that I quite like to leave some of that uh, paint because it shows some of the history of uh, the different um, things that the chest has been through since uh, Victorian times. I always use the sander in the direction of the grain. I don't know if you can see the grain on here now, but the grain is running that way. It's going whizzy, whizzy, whizzy around there, the grain, then comes back down here. So that's the direction of the grain. And the thing is to keep the belt sander going in the direction of the grain in a forward motion and then you won't get any nasty sort of um, bits if you go across the grain uh, it probably brings off the paint and varnish and stuff quicker but you end up with like it ends up looking like a ploughed field when you've finished so don't do that keep going in straight lines just go gently through one bit at a time just a section at a time to the end and then back again just keep going over that and over that until you end up with a nice clear finish which is at the moment obliterated by the belt sander. That's now probably had about 12 passes with the belt sander and hopefully now you can see it's uh, fairly clean. There's a little tiny piece here which is a green which I've left and I should continue to leave that because I think it's quite fun. Just going to try and home in on the 
In fact, I'll do this in a second when I've got the camera off the um, off the tripod. I'm just going to show you the uh, on the end here are the dovetail joints, which are now going to be exposed, which is fantastic because it just shows the clever construction of the piece of the chest. Now I've run the sander along this edge several times to get it down to the normal wood. Um, what I'm doing here is, as I was saying earlier on, I like to leave some of the character in the item because then it shows some of the stages. This is obviously the original and then there's the stain, a bit of white paint and the green and the marks, the dents stay in it. That's all part of the history. So I think that should be left and that's part of the dovetail joint there that's been cut to make the lid. What I think they normally do is make the boxes completely sealed in and then cut all the way around the edge to make the lid and then the two parts come separate and then they would uh, just um, put a hinge on the back and away they go. On the end of uh, each end of the trunk is uh, the initials of the owner, in this case G, G for, for George, F for Frank, J for Jackson and uh, then at least whoever's pulling the trunk out of the hold or off the train they know whose uh, trunk to look out for. It's probably easier to lose the lettering and then I'll get somebody to re-letter it, probably almost certainly in black. There's the chest back to its normal cedarwood glory and I've just put some water on the end there just so as you can hopefully see the dovetail joints. Not very easy to see actually. But it's the dovetail joints on the corner there. give the chest its... I've put some water on the corner there just to show the dovetail joints. You've got the things you're looking out for are those bigger bits and then the little skinny bits in between. That's one part of the dovetail joint. The top two you can see a bit more clearly how they work and as the name suggests they've got a dovetail effect so there's an angle which means that it's very very difficult then to pull the side away from the front or back and vice versa. It also gives you more edges to put glue onto so you end up with a much stronger joint and as they've been so beautifully cut in Victorian times that's why they're so difficult to actually see them. Right now we've uh, stripped off the old green gloss paint with our warm air gun and scraper and we've used the belt sander with the P40 grade of uh, sandpaper to take off uh, the darker stain that we found underneath the green gloss paint and now we're going to sand this down using the finishing sander. There's a reason why it's called a finishing sander because that's literally what it's going to be doing today. So on that we've got a P120 grade sandpaper which is the higher the number the finer the grade of sandpaper and obviously the smaller the number the rougher, coarser grade of sandpaper, but now we're wanting a finer sandpaper prior to waxing the uh, chest. And this is another way to wax your chest. Earlier on we were talking about dovetail joints and it wasn't very easy to see in the dark carport, but hopefully today you can perhaps see better how uh, the dovetail joints work. Perhaps you can see that this is wider here narrower here and so that basically forms a sort of dovetail joint which means that it's very difficult then for the front to pull away from the side of the chest and it gives you much more surface areas 
within the joint to glue and it makes it a very strong joint. Around the side here you can just see the quality of the woodwork at the time. The dovetail is wider there because that's the end of the dovetail and there's little narrow gaps there which it's best to look up dovetail jointing and you'll get a clearer impression than I can show you here today. But fascinating and it really really does work. Quite often used on draw fronts in the olden days because then when you pull the draw front with the handle the dovetail gives it that strength and stops you pulling the draw front off the sides of the draw. So now we're going to sand down the chest with the P120 sandpaper with our finishing sander and give it a brush off and then hopefully we'll be in a position where we can put some wax onto it. Now we're going to sand the side of the chest with the P120 paper and always follow the line of the grain because then you won't get any nasty marks in it. Just a bit noisy for a minute. as a baby's bum. Not bad, the end grains are usually a bit sort of rougher but actually that, as it's so old, is very very smooth. Now we're going to continue that along the back here. I've left some of the green paint on here and I've left bits of green paint because it just shows a bit of the character of and the history of the, the item and it's also laziness on my part as well but anyway. so. We're going to sand that down in line with the grain, so we're going that way in straight runs, make it nice and smooth and then we're going to brush it off with a clean dry 4 inch brush and then we can apply the wax. Right, so let's go sand that. <laughs> keep it dry and uh, I'm going to brush it off with a clean four inch uh, dry clean four inch brush. It's always best to wear gloves and uh, a mask when you're doing any sanding particularly when you're taking off the paint because a lot of the old paint has got lead in it and it can cause a nasty allergic reaction and it's also not very good for your lungs but my my hands, having done this for about 50 odd years, are fairly tough, but I still get, still damage them, so it's definitely best to wear a good pair of gloves. Now I've got my big brush, and I'm now going to brush off the uh, dust quickly. Throw it in the front of the camera. Brush this all off. If you look at the uh, one of my other videos which is on how to uh, restore a Urkel table, it gives you more information on how to uh, sand, put clear water, dry it off, sand it again, put clear water, dry it off, sand it again and then clean it off and then varnish it to get a perfect uh, finish. It will give you a bit more detailed instruction. coming off. Good time to be wearing the mask. Oopsie, I haven't actually sanded the top yet. Silly me. Now I'm just going to uh, sand the top which is the interesting part because it's so much easier. <laughs>
Oops, that's brushed off. Should be as smooth as a baby's bum. This uh, wax is a little bit solid at the moment, so I'm going to just put it inside the house just for a few minutes and the central heating I no doubt to get it to come up. But hopefully you can see there's a little area I've done there. And you can just see the colour coming up just for I've now applied one coat of wax to the old chest and we'll let that soak in and then we'll buff it up and then we'll probably apply another coat. But now this does show off the old original dovetail joints etc etc. So you can see how well it was made in the day. Focusing on that a bit better. It's not a very clear way of showing you dovetail joints, but if you look them up you'll see. This is the inside of the cedar wood chest. The reason they were made of cedar wood was to uh, stop the moths getting at the clothes because apparently moths don't like cedar wood or the cedar wood smell or whatever. And here we are, here's the finished article with uh, I think there's probably been three coats of wax on there now and then just let it soak in between coats and dry off and then buff it up with a nice uh, soft uh, cloth, that'd be great.